Several Alabama residents have spoken to the press about how Roy Moore, who is the Senate candidate, Senate Republican Senate candidate in Alabama, was known to go after young teen girls, and it was just this open secret that no one did anything about. In fact, he moved up the ranks in his law career while this open secret was out in the open. And so I wanna give you some of the direct quotes from these Alabama residents. Keep in mind, these are people in Alabama. These are not members of the DNC. These are not um, you know, liberal individuals trying to undermine him. These are people who uh, lived in his communities and were very familiar with him. One individual says that these stories have been going around this town for 30 years. Blake uh, Usri, who grew up in Gadsden and lives there currently told AL.com. He said that nobody could believe they hadn't come out yet because they're from 30 years ago. It's been going on for a long time. Another individual says him liking and dating young girls was never a secret. When we all were in high school in our neighborhoods up by Nakulala Falls, we heard it all the time. Even people at the courthouse knew it was a well-known secret. Another person said he watched us girls quite openly. His eyes crawled over our shirts and our backsides. He was so open about it that I would try and handle his order as quickly as possible. Now, the Victoria that had that quote there, Beverstock, is <coughs> is the only one in, in these stories that's actually above the age of 18. So she's she was 20 at the time when Roy Moore was checking her out. So that's fine, I mean, depends on your definition of fine, but certainly nothing illegal or, or uh, it's for a guy in his 30s to check out a 20 year olds, okay. But um, point being is that everybody in that town, everybody in the restaurant he went to, Knew that he checked out all the young girls, including the ones all the way down to 15. The, the girl that uh, said he tried to rape her in the, in, in the back of the uh, old Hickory restaurant was 15 when he started hitting on her. And then he wrote in her yearbook when she was 16. So, and it goes on and on. And then you've got the mall uh, where apparently he was banned from the mall because he was known as a pervert who was trying to uh, pick up young girls at the mall. and and. Uh, off duty police officers knew it, the people who worked at the mall knew it, everybody in the community knew it, Roy Moore was a pervert. And now by the way, you see all this and it becomes clear why Roy Moore is a moral crusader. Because he's crusading against himself, he knows that he has bad intent. And so what does he do? He does projection and he goes, oh, the sinners, the sinners. It's a way of deflecting and um, making sure that you overcompensate in some ways to, to prevent people from investigating your own behavior. Um, you know, look at that guy, look at these people, they're the immoral ones. Meanwhile, it's out in the open that he's out there going after teenage girls and making them incredible, making them uncomfortable and in some of the allegations literally sexually assaulting them by grabbing, uh, allegedly grabbing one of these women, uh, girls at the time by the neck and forcing her head toward her crotch. Uh, toward his crotch. Now, um, the reason why I'm giving you more context into what people apparently openly knew about Roy Moore is because the response to Roy Moore has been interesting to say the least, especially when you compare it to other individuals who um, had been uh, found guilty or pleaded guilty to uh, similar predatory behavior and how they actually spent time in prison for doing so. But when it comes to the case of Roy Moore, Oh, it's out in the open and he doesn't face any, you know, any part of our criminal justice system. So the RNC has now decided that they will not raise money for Roy Moore. They are not supportive of him whatsoever. On a national level, lawmakers are not supportive of him whatsoever. Now on a more local level though, in Alabama, that's where lawmakers could have a real impact because they could make a decision as to whether or not Roy Moore can move forward with this run for the Senate seat. And so the 21 members of Alabama's Republican Party Central Steering Committee, again, are the only ones who can pull Roy Moore's nomination and potentially block his path to the Senate after days of mounting allegations that their Senate nominee had sexual contact with teenage girls while he was in his 30s. Two Alabama GOP sources tell Talking Points Memo, they finally decided to hold a meeting later this week to hash out whether they can stand by his side. So they haven't even made that decision yet. 
they need to have a meeting to decide whether or not they're going to take action. And some of these um, politicians are hesitant to do so because Roy Moore still has his backers in Alabama. And since uh, nearly a quarter of them are seeking reelection, they're worried about losing that portion of the constituency and that portion of the vote. They're very unlikely to do anything. <laughs> Alabama Republican Party Chairwoman Terry Lathan said, uh, quote, very unlikely that Moore would lose uh, party's endorsement. Uh, so, uh, and in the entirety of the article and the discussions with these politicians in Alabama, the focus was what will the steering committee uh, do uh, because of the potential blowback to their careers? There was almost no discussion of, hey, this guy tried to rape a 16 year old girl in a parking lot and uh, nearly kidnapped a 14 year old and then uh, fondled her and, and all the different things that he did. That's not relevant. The relevant is thing is how is it going to affect other Alabama that's Republicans right. and right. how is that's it going to affect care about. It's amazing. And and you wonder why people hate politicians. Okay, this is why they hate politicians because isn't there somebody who's going to stand up in the meeting and go, guys, how? What what if it was your 14 year old daughter that he brought into the woods and he did? He brought her. He, he took her from her mom, the 14 year old, drove her 30 minutes into the woods so that he could have her alone and strip her down uh, to her underwear and make him. Make her touch his crotch after getting naked. He tricked the mom by saying that he was going to take care of her and he didn't want her to hear the painful custody hearings. And he said, It's okay, I'm the district attorney. Is no one going to stand up and say, What if it was your 14 year old daughter that he took into the woods? No, hey, Bob, what do you think about your political career? Hey, Sally, what do you think about your political career? Let's have a conversation about our political careers. And by the way, the only reason why they're having that conversation about their political careers is not just because they're the only bad guys in Alabama, no. Because they're worried that Republican voters in Alabama are deeply immoral and they don't care about child molestation. And if they vote against Roy Moore and take him out of that position, that the Republican voters in Alabama will be will stand with the child molester and then do political retribution on anyone who removed him. Help us build independent media together, tytnetwork.com slash join.